Michael Allen joins me now. He served on the National Security Council as the special assistant to President George W. Bush, and he's also the managing director of Beacon Global Strategies. Michael, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the show this morning. The Pentagon says the object was following air currents and moving along a northeastern path. Does that in any way tell you or say anything about where it could have originated from or what it was doing in that airspace? Well, I... I think it was a highly maneuverable object, and so I'm not certain that it would be able to tell me exactly where it came from. However, as we've learned with regard to the first balloon that was shot down last weekend, the intelligence community has very sophisticated instruments and the ability to analyze a digital signature. So I think very soon we'll hear from them about what the flight path might have been for the object that was shot down yesterday. So as we've noted, this is the second object to be caught flying in U.S. airspace in less than a week. I know, Michael, we don't know the origin or the provenance of this second object, but how concerning does this become for national security at this point? Have we reached a point where it's being viewed as some type of national security crisis? I think so. I think this is a tangible example for everyone in the country to be able to look and see that the Chinese um, have sort of aggressive intentions and they want to collect as much information on the United States military and the way our national security protection of the continental U.S., how that works. And, and I think this is what they are trying to do. They're sort of testing the system. I think the balloon that was shot down last weekend is a terrific complement to the satellites that the Chinese have up in orbit. And so I think it's a bit of a wake-up call, if you will, for the fact that the Chinese, through multiple platforms, their telecommunications platform called Huawei, which I think is another conduit for spying around the world, and even the personal data that we surrender to the Chinese through TikTok. There's just the numerous things that I think the Chinese are up to, and this is a good opportunity for us to just sort of think about that and get ourselves in a good posture for what we call a, a, an extreme competition with a geopolitical rival. This recent incident was resolved more quickly than last week's Chinese spy balloon incident. Do you think Biden reacted in any way to the fact that there was criticism because of the delay in shooting it down? Or do you think this was done because it was the safest and quickest way to be able to resolve this particular incident? Well, I think it's a little of both. I think I can take the explanation at face value that it might have interfered with commercial aviation. But at the same time, I think the president learned that, you know what, it's better to go ahead and take these things down sooner rather than later. We can't be completely confident that it's not the type of intelligence platform that could have unique collection over, for example, military bases and the like. So I think the lesson of the last week is take these things down the sooner, the better, get them in a place where we can collect the debris, if you will, and analyze it and figure out what kind of capabilities our adversaries have to collect on the United States. Mike, I've got less than a minute, but I did want to ask Alaskan Governor Mike Dunleavy saying this incident showing Alaska is the most strategic place on Earth for geopolitics. Others may beg to differ, but Alaskan state officials are also calling on the president for more federal support. What could that support look like for Alaskans? Well, we do have tremendous sort of missile defense and radar capability up in Alaska. Maybe he means we could do more there. And I'm sure, you know, uh, the protectors of the continental U.S. and, of course, Hawaii and Alaska and Northern Command will take that under advisement and see if there's not more that we could do there. But, you know, I think the lesson of the balloon is, is that it, while it may have started up in Alaska, it got down to the continental U.S. and, and trans, you know, transited the entire country. So it's not just Alaska that may have an issue, although they may be on the front lines. Yeah, and it seems like Alaska seems to be a point of entry uh, that we're all kind of looking at. I don't think Alaska's had this much attention, frankly, since Sarah Palin. Michael Allen, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I appreciate you. Thank you.